My horse to follow for this year would be uh, Edward O'Grady's hurdler, The Real Article. Uh, he was a bit disappointing when favourite for the Galway hurdle a few starts back, but he came back uh, on Sunday to win a, a really good race uh, at Tipperary in really good style. Form's very solid, beat Lusker Lad, who'd had a warm-up run on the flat, and uh, beat him easily on the bridle, eight lengths. That's very good form. I think he's going to make up into a champion hurdle contender, and he'd be my horse to follow. The real article. Down now to the final flight, and it's the real article who's clear at the last. And over from Lusker Lad, Donis Palm in third, and then comes the Bull Hayes, but up towards the finish, and it's the real article, well clear, will win it by ten lengths. The real article clear for Barry Gersey. Then second, Lusker Lad, third, Donis Palm. Uh, got with my old friend, uh, Andy Stewart. Uh, Owns an horse this year with Graham Wiley. Come from France. Think the world of this creature. The horse is called Pacha du Poldea. P A C H A. New word D U. Then P O L D E R. Uh, I think Andy and Graham paid a, a nice few quid for this. A nice few euros to get this away from France and send it to Paul Nichols. It's a four-year-old. Can still run in novice hurdles to the end of November. And then it began chasing with the allowance. Could be a proper arco animal this, but going to be a real nice horse in the future. Pacha du Poldea, ladies and gentlemen. My creature to follow for the winter. My jumper to follow for the coming season is Sparky May. It was really impressive it when it won at Ascot. Uh, proved no match for Quivega at Cheltenham, but uh, no disgrace in that after pulling really hard. And again, pulled really hard at Aintree on a final start of three miles. Didn't quite get home. Um, but if she learns to settle, then uh, she really could be something else, I think. So Kieran Burke's taken over the training this season, um, and she could be set for a good year. Sparky May, she travelled so fluently. Now all of a sudden she begins to need the line, but she's carrying, carrying on galloping relentlessly and a big success for Pat Rodford and Kieran Burke. Sparky May sees off Carol's legacy. I'm also excited about seeing Hidden Keel running over fences this season. He was a, a good novice last season for Charlie Longston, and I think he'll be a real flagship horse for him now. He's rated 149, I think, over fences after two all the way wins at Exeter in the spring and that'll put him in the sort of high ten stones for the Paddy Power Gold Cup. He could easily develop into a Ryanair chase horse. I think he's got a lot of potential. Here he draws towards it, he steadies, and he's over, and he's home. It's Hidden Keel, he took a few chances on the way, uh, but he's going to come up here and score in quite convincing style. For Charlie Longston and Paddy Brennan, he's down, Hidden Keel goes on to win it nicely. My dark horse to follow over jumps this season is Paul Nichols' Sin Bin a five-year-old owned by Trevor Hemmings who cost £65,000. He won a Chepstow bumper in April by half a length from Class Encounter and the pair pulled 18 lengths clear of the others. The main aspect to this performance was the winning time which was very impressive when compared to the three hurdle races run earlier on the card. Being a son of presenting, good ground is going to suit him so he will probably be seen in the next few months, maybe not again until the spring. And Paul Nichols has already singled this horse out as one novice hurdler he's really looking forward to. With the two mile chasing division looking quite wide open this season, my jumper to follow would be the Paul Nichols trained Gazeo. Now, forget his flop in the Arkle and his failure at Aintree, uh, where he made jumping errors. If you wind the clock a few months to the start of the season, you'll see that he beat Captain Chris, the eventual Arkle winner, 10 lengths at Cheltenham, and then also gave him £10 and a beating at Newbury. That's as good a form as anything shown by a two-mile novice last season, so I think there's still more to come. Paul Nichols echoes that sentiment. He's been very bullish, thinks he's improved lots of intensive schooling. As for an anti-post uh, wager, well, he's 25 to 1 standout for the Queen Mother Champion Chase at the moment. I think that's a massive price. He's due to make his reappearance in the Holden Gold Cup on November the 1st. Off 155, I think he'll beat anything that turns up there. I think by mid-November, he'll be an 8, 9 to 1 shot at max for the uh, Queen Mother. So my advice would be back Gazelle, follow him all season and get on for the Queen Mother Champion Chase. My jumper to follow for the upcoming season is a horse called Royal Guardsman, who is uh, trained by Colin Tizard. Uh, Royal Guardsman has only raced once. It was in a bumper at Fontwell. Uh, it was the same bumper that Tizard bought um, cue cards to the race course for the first time in, and, uh, and Royal Guardsman won in very similar fashion. He absolutely obliterated a high-class field. He ran away with the race, winning by 11 lengths, and. Uh, Everything that's come out of the race to run since has run with great credit. He's, uh, he's a hugely promising horse and I think he's got a very bright future. I would not be surprised to see him turn up as one of the favourites for the Supreme Novice um, come the Cheltenham Festival. 
My jumper to follow this season is Divers. Ferdy Murphy's progressive French bread. He absolutely bolted up in the centenary novices chase at the festival. I'm surprised he's only gone up £7 for that win. He can start life on the mark in the late 130s and if creeping into the paddy power he's got to have a huge chance. Connections may need to go and get a win to get him in at the bottom of the weights. It's possible that the cutoff point for that race may be in the low 140s, but I think he, if he does run in the paddy power, he's going to take all the beating. And he's just the type that could make him to a Ryanair prospect this season. I would follow him on every start. I think this is a seriously talented chaser. I'm quite excited about this because my horse to follow this season is Simon Sig. You can see him here, the grey horse, winning the champion point to point bumper at Fairy House last season. He won this by 13 lengths over two miles and two furlongs. He beats a horse called Kandinsky, who was a good second on his previous run when a 13 to eight favorite. Now the owner of Simon Sig has turned down telephone numbers to sell this horse. Um, and he's since moved trainers. He was trained by Ian Ferguson, he's now moved to Nicky Henderson. Um, and I really think that this is gonna be a most exciting novice hurdler this season. As they race inside the last 200 yards, and if Simon Sig is out in front, Kandinsky is second and Delebeck third, Bardeline is next, and they're well clear of in fifth place, done and dusted, but up towards the finish, it's Simon Sig who's clear by 12 lengths as they go to the line. Simon Sig and Chris Colley will win for Ian Ferguson in second place. Continue. My jumper to follow next season is Chablay, trained by Nicky Henderson. This horse cost connections 260 grand at the sales after he'd won a point to point in Ireland. Um, and you could see why when he won his only start at Kempton last season. It looked like a really good competitive novice hurdle, but Chablay won pretty easily with the rest of the field well strung out. He was more than entitled to go to Cheltenham on that form, but Henderson wisely knew that fences were always going to be his thing, so he's held him back for this season, and he should win more than his fair share of novice chases, possibly ending up in the RSA.